Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Resonance Arcade. It's Wednesday night, and we are live. Yeah, I like being live. You like being live. I do. Uh, I love I it. I've been pre-recorded. Hello to everybody, and uh, welcome to the show. This is a show about games. We talk about uh, games for a couple of hours every Wednesday night. Um, four, usually four blokes from the UK, from the north of England, uh, just talking about whatever we want to talk about, referring to game dev, um, games, gaming industry news, E3, for example. Now, has anything happened with E3 since we last... Uh, I mean, I don't want to talk about them yeah. specifically yet. But, it's finished. Well, we know that, but I know there was a couple of days, wasn't there? Or there was a day or something of... Uh, it's yeah, it finished on a Thursday. But I think all the announcements came before E3 started on the Tuesday, to be honest. Right, Most okay. of them did anyway. Right, well, I'm sure we'll get into that. Anyway, there's actually a few things that have come from it and a few clarifications and interviews that have gone on with the media and, and stuff that is fairly interesting that we can uh, talk about in a bit. But um, anyway, before we, we get uh, get moving on, on the news, talk about games we played again this week. Yeah. Obviously, all of us are still playing The Witcher 3 because it's the best game on the fucking planet ever, apart from Lou obviously doesn't think that. <laughs> he's gonna he's, Lou's going to complain about it. He's going to find something to have a go at again. Um, do you want me to start with this, or do you want to spaff on about how good it is first? I want, I want to hear what you've no, got to say I'm, I've, 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 I've talked about it way more than enough, so... <laughs> I, I'm, I'm enjoying it as... Like the game that it is, but I'm not enjoying it anywhere near as much as a lot of games that I play out of like a wanting a willingness to play off the bat, off, off, like for its own sake, if you get me. And I think the problem I've got with it is I still can't get over the fact that it is forcing me to play the game the way it wants me to play it in every way. That it seems like I, I, I've realized from playing The Witcher 3 that I what I get the most out of games is being able to do it my own way. And being able to feel like I'm getting around the system. You're you're wrong. Move on. Next. <laughs> now, I, I look. I understand that. I understand because I love open world kind of, you know, free. I, I love the Deus Exes. I love the Skyrims. I love the fact that you've got lots and lots of options to play. But when you say that, do you, are you talking about specifically things like you have to fight monsters? You can't just stealth around them. You have the to fuck? use oils and bombs and. Yeah, the whole, the whole, the game has to be played the way that it was designed to be played. It's not, it, <laughs> it's not... Can, can we take that quote out of context and, and analyse it and see how ridiculous you, that is? You, it does sound ridiculous, but the fact is a lot of games allow you to play the game with a bit of flexibility. And now I know that The Witcher does have a bit of flexibility, but in the end of the day, you still have to go through it in the same way that it it's, was intended to, it's to be It's not done. linear, though. It's not linear, I never said it was linear, but it... It, it does force you down a certain way of playing the game. Like, you have to make use of all of the potions and the, the, the signs and the bombs and stuff like that you in order to. To, to beat a lot of the fights. Well, I've, I, I had to put the difficulty down twice because of the how you, difficult the fights were. Because cause, cause you I wasn't computer using, games. No, because I wasn't using certain things. I, like, I've never used a bomb in the game. Since the, the I, you tutorial. don't have to use the bombs. I actually don't like them. Um, I, I prefer to use oils. Yeah. I've I used oils use twice. I use the bombs for destroying monster nests. That's about it. Well, yeah, yeah. that's I use. That's why I use them for. I've used the oils twice, and I don't get them. Like, do, do you? If you apply them, do they run out after time periods? No. Do they says, run out? It says when you put them on, you've got twenty hits with that on, and then when you get the advanced one, it goes to forty hits. And well, it didn't say that anywhere. That it, it, does, it, it just says it wears off. It puts it puts a little drop symbol on your weapon and if you hover over your weapon it comes up and says at the bottom of the stats now, I, I have a it'll give you 10 percent more damage on I, blah, blah, blah. I have a criticism here in that yes lou's right in that it's not clear it does say it somewhere but it does it's not clear as in you don't know if while you're playing the oil's worn off yeah mm -hmm. but i've got to a point now with my upgrade tree where I, my oils don't wear off i've got the i've went down all the way down the um the green tree or whatever it is the the, the oils and bombs tree yeah, the, and, the uh, point I'm make the point I'm making is though is that it's great if it's a game that you can get away with naturally. But I don't get away with these games naturally. I don't like third person games. I find the immersion really, really weak because I'm stood behind my character all the time. I find the story so boring. Like I, I skip through the the dialogue, and that's not something that I normally do. I normally no, hate people who do. do that. You, but I skip. I skip. I skip to the. No, I don't. I, I like about, read. You talked about how often that you you don't you don't no, what, follow what stories in games. So well, what I talked about is that if this game gives you talking in the game, but it doesn't give you subtitles, I find it hard to follow. 
But this game, I just don't care about what people have to say to me. I just want to skip to the bit where they tell me what I've got to do. Okay, so the well, story I, dis lost I on disagree me. in that in that I find each every single interaction immersive and and drawing and that's what keeps me going. Well, I, lo I love the mechanics in the game, but <coughs> I keep going back because I've, yeah. I like the characters. I think there is a certain richness in the characters that's been missing from quite a lot of similar games. I, d I don't think you're giving it anywhere near enough time. I've like <laughs> like, no, given 30 hours of my time so far. I, and I, I am enjoying the game to an extent. I just don't feel like I'm getting the same experience out of it that I would from something like Skyrim, which is a true open world game. Then you can play it however you want. You can be the character that you want to be. I don't like being in, forced into a situation where I have to play so rigidly like the game is intended to be played. Okay, well, I just want to say hello to somebody in chat who's a uh, first time they're watching a uh, talk show, Victoria Rocks 15. Hello, welcome That's to Victor the show. Rox. Victor Rocks. Oh, God, that does, <laughs> that doesn't bode, bode well, does it? Sorry, it's my new my new 4K screen. Everything's tiny. Everything's absolutely tiny on my screen. Um, so, yeah, what we do in a, on the games talk show is basically we talk about gaming news. First, at the moment, we're talking about the games that we've played this week. Uh, it happens to be The Witcher 3 at the moment, and that's what we've been talking about for the last three or four weeks. Um, but then we move on to things like we're talking about E3 news. Uh, we're going to be talking about, um, well, various industry stories that have come out over the last week. Uh, there's a few there's a few interviews that have come out of E3 as well. Um, it's a particularly busy time at the moment, so there's a lot of content to talk about. But right now, we're talking about The Witcher 3, and Lou is criticising it like, he criticizes every single game ever because he it's just what he does in fact it's not just games it's everything it's everything in life if it's not hipster trendy bollocks he's not interested what on earth is that that's you steve have you got a mouse <laughs> <laughs> no but i'm i don't know what i just fidget some arms and I'm, from the moment I'm blowing compressed air between my finger and my don't, do, don't do that <laughs> while we're on a talk show <laughs> well, anyway, Lou, wh where were you? Just waiting for you to stop rabbiting on and stating the obvious so I can jump and in slate, Lou. Go on. You, you're just wrong. <laughs> just wrong like on every possible level. First off, right, it's a role-playing game, which means that you assume the role of, of someone. Of something or someone, and I appreciate Skyrim it. isn't a traditional role-play game. None of the Elder Scroll games are role-play games, specifically, if you don't take on a role. Let's, let's think about... roles that you can... Let's think about a role-playing game like a, a cards game or a, or a um, play in World... Um, uh, not World of Warcraft, Warhammer or something like that. Those are role-playing games in that you, you assume the role of a, a race of, of people or a race of aliens or whatever in Warhammer, for example, or um, you play you play or you, you assume the role of something and you're within constraints of that world. And that's what this is. This is a game that constrains what you're doing. I don't, but it's really good at it. It's it's really really good at, at the, the mechanics it, it gives you. Yes, it is. But it's really good if you enjoy that type of game. But if you want to play the game differently, like I didn't play Skyrim like it was intended, and I really enjoyed it because I could play it that way. I could do How crazy was stealth. To be well, it, the way that you tend to play Skyrim games, was intended to be played stealthy, which is why they had a stealth skill tree. Not intended, you didn't play stealthy. You you no, put heavy armor on it no, and, no. and it smashed everything. Yeah, but that's the thing about Skyrim is that you choose the role you want to play. Exactly, and the role playing yeah. game is a game which allows you to assume a role. It doesn't mean a specific role, it doesn't mean you assume the role of a specific person. It means that you choose a different role and play that role in that game. In the traditional sense, role play games have always been you assuming a role. It's only been of recent years where they've come in with this open world strategy that you can assume which role you would like to play. So they haven't. If you played a role play like uh, Might and Magic or something like that, you're playing within Might and Magic. What's the card game called? That. that. He was a Might and Magic, yeah. Is yeah. it? He was Might and Magic. Uh, anyway, you, you you assume the role of a wizard, and you've got constraints in that you are, you know, you can cast magic and you can do this, and constraints within that world. Uh, that's. That's the, no different, and this is where role. Well, where, where role play comes from is Dungeons and Dragons. In Dungeons and Dragons, Dungeons you choose your you, 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 you choose your class, you choose your race. Yeah, you choose everything about. And you're constrained by role. that class and race. And you are yeah, but you choose. By which but you choose. You yeah, but you choose. Yeah, but, at the okay, start. so you're playing a character here. You're playing a specific character from a book, from a law, from a universe that has already been defined. Don't play the Witcher if you don't want to play as Geralt of Riv Rivia. Yeah, don't play the Witcher if you don't want to be a Witcher. Well, exactly, this is what I'm trying to say. I do like the game, I just don't like it as much as games which give me freedom. I think what the point I'm trying to make is that I prefer 
role-playing games to let me choose the role and not define the role for me. Okay, so why have you put 29 hours into it then? What, what's kept you going back? I don't really know. Because it's good. It is good. I'm not going to... Well, it's denial it. it twice. It's good, but it's it's frustrating because it it's making me play the game in a very prescribed way. It's linear, not in its in the way that you play. So, no, sorry, linear, not in the way that you progress through the game, but linear in the way that you play each individual segment of it. So, have you been using your beast theory? Yeah, I've been looking at it. Have you been using it though, like properly? Using so, how? what I mean, when you come across a monster, if you've forgotten how to fight that monster properly, have you been basically the beast yeah, theory? Yeah, so you, you use is, the trap thing against uh, wraiths and things like that. Yes, well, the, the the beast theory is for well, you can use the trap against almost any enemy, and it'll slow them yeah, down. But in wraiths, can... you have to use them in order to in order to make them make appear them and make them, so them tangible. Yeah. Um, but you know, the, the, you've got. I forgot where I was going now with that. <laughs> Talk yeah. about. You have to use a beast tree in order to, to define what strategy you use it, to fight an enemy. Yes, and, and it's a metaphor for being... different strategy. And it's a metaphor for being a witcher in terms of you are looking at the beast tree because you're only human, but a bit, whereas a witcher would know exactly how to fight every single enemy because they have, t they have trained themselves to do that. Whereas you're playing a computer game, you're not a witcher, but... The beast is there to go right. This is this. You need these, but you can use these bombs, or you can use this sign, or you can use this oil. It's very basic. The, the basic right, right, principle. Right there, what you're describing is the prescribed, like, way the game works, which is the thing that I've got issue with. In that it says it's weak to this, and you can't use this on it. And it's a bit of like rock, what? paper, scissors. What? what? No, it's not rock, paper, scissors. Well, it is. It's because it's saying that the, the no, race can't be harmed unless you use that certain sign. Th what's rock, paper, scissors about that? That's a game of chance. This is a game of, I'm a witcher. I know exactly which oils to use on, on this particular well, enemy. Well, what if I want to try something different? What if I want to bend well, you, the rules? You, can. Try... you can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You can't. You not the same... Fight. You can't not fight an enemy, it just takes you longer to kill them. The whole point is, is for you to get into the role of a witcher, roleplay that witcher, and become good at fighting different beasts. That's what a witcher does. The witchers fight and fight lots of different enemies, but lots I of don't different beasts. But I don't and feel like I, do, I don't feel like it's me that's learning how to do that. I don't, I don't feel oh, like for fuck's I. Sake. No, it's not. It's because it's Geralt. No, it's exactly. Geralt doesn't, isn't learning. Geralt isn't learning. Geralt already knows. But I am. I'm a gamer. I'm playing a new type yeah, of game. Yeah, so that's for me, what the beast theory's am, there for. And I'm not learning. I'm being told what to do by I, the game. I think that's a brilliant mechanism. It's it's basically say, telling you how to fight every single enemy. There's but there's so many enemies with so if, many configurations. If you were to play Dungeons and Dragons, right? And we were all sat there. And Chris was the dungeon master because he's kind of a I've bit, got the beard. Bit of a megalomaniac like that. I um, would be. And you come across, I don't know, a swamp gremlin. Right. <laughs> and you decide, swamp gremlin, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw my enchanted toothbrush at him. It's not going to have any effect because there's only certain things that affect swamp gremlins. And that's been in RPGs right the way since fucking day one. It has, yeah. but the RPG, the, the, the thing that you're missing is that in The Witcher, you do not get to choose your class. Right. In the Witcher, you're, 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 you're playing the role of a character he's, of, but, of your play and I'm not saying that that's that wrong person. I'm just saying that I don't in like in Final Fantasy 7 you didn't get to choose your class and that's one of your favourite games ever so yeah that's a very different game I really enjoy the no, story it's, it's still an RPG I, I can play still that game to do what what Square made uh, Cloud capable of doing they do but I would also be quite happy to play that game with no battles whatsoever and just watch it for 6 hours which I've done right well that's whereas again, that's... I wouldn't with the Witcher because I don't again, engage with the story either so I you know you're defending this game, but this I'm not game. slaying it. I'm just saying that it's not as good as some other games that I've played because it doesn't fit with the style of game that I'm accustomed to when it comes to RPGs or games in general. I like games that give me a bit more freedom. And I, I can see maybe... why that this game is as constrained as it is because it's got a small team who've made a massive world and made a fucking impressive game for such a small team and virtually an indie studio, but still... I think that's... It's not um, as good as... No, it's not as good as Skyrim, but it's not the same fucking game as Skyrim. Stop going on about it. We're not... It's like us talking about it not being as good as Quake 2 when we're talking about new FPS games. I, never, I don't think I've ever said that. I've said Quake 2's a brilliant game, but COD's got its benefits, you know? It's not the same... It's not the same thing. 
You just you just say things just to be awkward, don't no, you? You've got fast. no opinion, no actual opinion here. <laughs> Screw it's, you. It's, it's bollocks. <laughs> anyway, anybody else, anybody sensible got anything to say about The Witcher 3? Um, <laughs> one criticism um, that I have noticed it becoming increasingly buggy. What do you mean? Um, well, there's a weird bug whereby sometimes if I'm in the inventory and I'm kind of hovering over items to, you know, to check whether I want to sell them or and I want to quit more of you, it'll just hang and then force quit the game. Mm. Another issue, um, which is with one of the, uh, the DLCs, Fool's Gold, the extra mission um, that came out, after you've, spoiler alert for anyone who hasn't done it, after you've completed the first section of the mission, you have to go and talk to the pig. My pig's not there. Oh, uh, hang on, hang on. I think that is exactly... I uh, No, no, I've done the Fool's Gold one. There's there's a few missions where I've, I've blocked it, but I've actually just finished the Fool's Gold one, but the, that's... I don't know, that might be... Yeah, I've checked online and a few people said the pig has actually fallen through the floor and is floating in the water beneath you. <laughs> it's not there on mine. It lo looks like it's actually fallen through the geometry. So that mission's going to be incompletable for me. There's, there's one, there's, there's two missions that are incompletable. One is um, Closed City, the Novigrad Closed City one. Uh, it's a level 11 thing and I've done I've done like I've, I've spent ages doing loads of like fetch and quest things and, and then I've got to the point where it's just there's no marker on the map and it's not telling me what to do there's just nothing there's not even when I go into my quest log there's the, everything's ticked and it's like I'm not completed the quest I haven't finished the quest what the hell <laughs> I suppose with there being such a small team you can't expect perfection and it is a lot more solid and stable than many triple a titles oh, that came out definitely well it's a triple a game but it's 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 a very i think it's still a very impressive feat in terms it's, of oh, hugely impressive <coughs> especially when you consider the size of the team that was on <coughs> Arkham knight and all the shit that, that's been happening with that but, <laughs> yes, but we'll, we'll come on to that we shall talk about that soon um so yes only other get well only other games i've been playing this week i haven't got really got anything else new to say about witcher um, if you guys are interested in, in other other opinions of uh, The Witcher that we had with, with the last two shows, we basically <laughs> beamed about it and Lou sat there going, oh, I hate it because of this this week. Oh, I don't like the control system. Oh, I don't like it because Geralt's I face. hate it because today I had a tuna sandwich. Today I can't I play it because cause it's That's too like hard. It. Yeah, I've put it on a too hard setting. I've got it on the second hardest setting and it's... You could admit, guys, Pretty at least I'll now. give this one a chance. I haven't just stopped playing it after half an hour. You did. Which is what I usually do. You did until we spuffed about it for two hours a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, because I thought I've got to give this game a chance because you're all jizzing over it. It's amazing. I've also been, I've also been playing Killing 4 2 as well, which is I'm still really enjoying. We've got some new maps on a custom server and some, some old maps like Defense, which was a classic on there, and the original Killing Floor. And we've been having a great time with that. It's, uh, it's she still. She hasn't been inviting me along to. Well worth playing, unless you're playing with Steam, in which case it's not worth playing. So we don't oh, invite. Shit. <laughs> I'd only be better at you guys, are better at that youth than you guys anyway. Yeah, you've been around with two swords. <laughs> yeah, anything with swords. It's got you swords. You put oil right? on your guns. <laughs> <laughs> oil on my gun up. Necrophage oil on my gun. Can right all over that shit. Um, I've only ever been. I've been oh, oh, we know we talked about Plants vs Zombies two, and I said that it was. I've only literally just started it last week. I've been playing it a little bit more this week, and it is basically a pay to, pay to win game now. They've they've proper nerfed it. The first All the games one was have gone like that. The, the first one was really cool. It was like um, the, the, there was a couple of things you could buy, but it wasn't like to win. You could complete the game, but now. There's so many levels in it, I've lost count. There's loads of stuff to un loads of things to unlock, but the main problem I have is that when you get onto level two, you just can't start getting absolutely swamped with the zombies, like absolutely swamped. And the only way to really get past the levels is by using power-ups and the power-ups cost coins. And obviously you've only got a limited number of coins. And it's like, um, and plus the Zen garden, which you have to fill up in the last one, you got, um, you got extra coins for built, like growing plants in a separate section of the game in the first one. You basically could spend coins to buy plants and plant them all and get extra power-ups and that. But this one, you have to pay gems or coins to get the plants in the first place. And when you do get them, then, then they give you power-ups for like a single level. So it's, it's just a cash cow. It's turned into this... What could be brilliant, you know? But they've just... They'd swamp you with zombies and it's like... 
what's the point of me even trying to play this anymore? So I'm probably not going to bother. Any, um, I know it's kind of a bit of a cut my nose off despite my first scenario, but any pay to win games now I refuse to play. Yeah, well, no, no, I'm, I'm, I'm 100% with you. Even if, even if you can play them without paying. Yeah. Um, it's a shame, isn't it? Really, that, that it is a shame, like but it's just it's, it, it's just greed from people. It's just a way to make money. I mean, at the end of the day, Plant vs Zombies is an EA game, so it's a big yeah. studio. They're going to want to make money off casual games because people plow money into them. Uh, right. So the other game I played very, very briefly is just today because yesterday I couldn't fucking play it. Uh, it was Batman Arkham Knight. Why couldn't you play it? Yesterday? Couldn't play it because every time I try to start it up, just blank screen with a big cursor going round loading D couldn't even boot the game up yesterday uh, would that be um, the development problem with the game with this I'm, massive budget I, I have no idea I have no <laughs> idea why it wasn't working yesterday and it's working today because I'm sure there hasn't been an update it could have been something with my PC yesterday I don't know oh, you um, probably needed another 12 cores on your CPU and like another 3000 cores on your graphics card in order to make it run properly here he goes here he goes <laughs> now let me let me just clarify something right now I've only played 10-20 minutes of it at the most I've got to a point where I, I'm, I haven't even went to a mission yet. I've just loaded up, got Batman kind of moving around the city and realised that I'm probably going to have to play it with a control pad because I don't really like the controls with um, with the keyboard. But I don't know, it might be a, con a configuration thing. It is stuck to 30 frames a second. Now, you can update a config and change that. You can change the max. I was just about to do that before that we went out of the call. Um, apparently people are getting lots of bugs and um, freezes with it which is again in fact well, let's let's organically move on to the the gaming news because this is the first story that I've got in our gaming news um, so yeah th th there's a, apparently a lot of bugs for it people are crashing a desktop there's f major frame rate issues in terms of it's dropping to four frames a second uh, when the Batmobile turns up for example which I haven't got to yet I don't know if that's going to happen to me or not but uh, apparently just everything just grinds to a halt um however it does look beautiful the game and i, I can't deny it doesn't that doesn't look as beautiful as a game working properly <laughs> okay i haven't had any problems with it yet apart from apart from I... the fact you couldn't get it booted up oh no, no okay okay yes yesterday <laughs> but when i've been playing it for the 20 minutes i've not had any frame rate problems i've not had any uh, the only problem I have had is sometimes while I'm gliding in the sky, I don't know if you played the other Batman games, but you can basically glide around as Batman, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, but he just suddenly, sometimes he just starts flapping up and down like that. So Batman's kind of flailing in the air <laughs> as, he's, as he's gliding from one Flat place man. to another. <laughs> Flat man. It's not just his cape either, it's Batman he's doing that. He's just <laughs> looking, flapping up and down. So, um, again, not played it enough to really know if it's a problem or something. I'm doing the controls or what, because I was playing on keyboard, so probably an issue. But I said there's there's tons of problems, and people with AMD cars are having even more problems, apparently. Yeah, but what, what, what scumbag buys an AMD card? Yeah, exactly, and if you buy an AMD card, then you can turn off right now. Yeah. Because we, we're not your friends. So, with all these issues that have uh, been happening on launch day, um, it does seem to add a, a bit of credence to my comment earlier on that it's been programmed extremely lazily. Um, yes and no. The console and PS4 versions have been... I mean, I'm not trying to defend it here. I'm just giving you some facts that are out there. Um, yeah. The the console and PS4 versions... Is, oh, well, Xbox One and PS4 versions have both been critically acclaimed. They've got brilliant reviews so far. They've been getting, you know, eights, nines, tens out of ten. Um, no issue, no real issues, I don't think, with them. But the PC port has been done by an external studio. But so basically, the PC port is suffering again because it's been made for consoles, and the PC version, which they've released on the same day, which you've got to give them a little bit of credit for. Oh, St Steve's gone. Um, we've got to give them a little bit of credit for like actually releasing the PC console version, the PC version at the same time of consoles, because they don't normally do that, do they? <laughs> Why does that keep happening? <laughs> Because your computer's awesome. Um, well, I think that the, the game will have been developed for all machines, and then someone will have hacked in the keyboard and mouse support, I guess. Uh, well, again, I don't know. I don't, I don't know what goes on behind the scenes these big studios. It's a bit crazy. But yeah, I mean, there's lots of links that I've just pasted into chat. Apparently, some <clears> of the main PC problems is well, I can't, I can't change my mouse sensitivity. You have to go into the config file for that. Get a load of that. What? In 2015. Uh, my mouse is like a really high DPS gaming mouse. 
I've got it on the middle setting and it's usually okay and I have to bring my, my sensitivity right down in any game and I just I, I literally a tiny little move and I'm fucking spinning around like maybe didn't, that's didn't, what just, does that not just support the thing I said a few episodes about, ago about configuration of controls and games getting steadily worse hmm. for, for PCs they are yeah yeah for PC yeah well obviously there's no configuration that needs to be done in consoles really is well, there well there is there should be a, a, some kind of con um, controller be... sensitivity yeah yeah there is but it's there, there always is I'm sure there is a controller sensitivity in the console versions of Batman as well. Uh, so, gaming, gaming panda in chat, we're uh, we're talking about um, Batman Arkham Knight, uh, specifically the the recent PC problems that have been uh, reported. Well, say recent, it only came out yesterday. So, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's the, the, they've also absolutely destroyed the Steam reviews and Steam um, uh, negativity page. Last time I looked, there was three and a half thousand negative negative uh, down votes and it says mostly negative i don't think i've seen a game saying mostly negative on steam before <laughs> but that's linked to profile isn't it if a high profile game comes out and it's buggered then it's going to get absolutely shanked uh, by the reviews as it should as it yeah. should there's, there's no i mean I'm, I'm not one who goes on these sites and updates you know, but gives down votes for things but yeah i'm i'm you can't do this i mean how, how does it get through quality assurance testing how many computers they must test it on one computer and then it works, and they're like, yeah, it's working, lads, it's running. Well, they, it. they yeah, obviously it's don't test it with left-handed players anymore. <laughs> they fired all of those game testers with lefties. Mm. If it's anything like my current um, my current client, I, I, I work in the software industry, but not games specifically. They don't care about testing and, and, you, and you know quality assurance So when it comes to development, so maybe that's what happens it's in some It's something that everyone says they do, and no one actually does. But some people have... have worked with and worked for are very 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 good at it and they 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 value it and i value it extremely uh, I'm, I'm, extremely I'm, sure in, um, I'm sure in steven's industry as well they, oh, they're yeah. rather important you've got to be iso 9001 and stuff ts 16949 iso 12000 14001 exactly it's, so the list of standards goes on in, a start, in the batmobile in arkham knight mm -hmm. the, uh, the front wheels from this picture I'm looking at here, it looks like each wheel is two tyres with a steel rim in the middle with lights going round. I've no idea, I haven't got From this picture I'm yet. looking at here, that wouldn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, uh. I'm, not, I'm not sure that's something that I, I can comment on yet, but I'm sure I'll get onto the physics of the car when I, get, when I actually get the car. Yeah. People have been uh, waiting for the Batmobile for a while though, so... It's a shame that, it, yeah. again, these, these kind of games come out and they get... They get negative criticism for technical problems, whereas by the sounds of it, it is a perfectly good, decent, and well put together game. Apart from the fact the PC port is horrific. <laughs> I think I think it's a real shame that this is happening these days. Well, these days, I, I think you know it's a justified reason to complain because. I mean, how much did you pay for uh, for Arkham Knight? Nothing because I got it. F well, I got it free with my. The graphics average card. person is going to be paying what sixty quid. Generous, so I was I was going to say forty, but we'll yeah, on PC. We'll call, on PC. 50, we'll call it fifty pound. Right. If you pay fifty pound, I would expect something because that's a triple A title price. I'd expect something that has got very few problems, and if there are problems, they should be very specific to a random configuration of hardware that you've got, not across the board PC wipeout or any AMD card failure that is just fucking yeah it's it's it's, it's not it's not acceptable is it i mean it's i know not... pc is an afterthought a lot of the time because the pc market is nowhere near as big as the console market and it's all about making money so but and people have already pre-ordered this game this is another problem with pre-ordering pre the pc market is much bigger than the console market the gaming market no it's not I yeah, just uh, absolutely not. I, I refuse to believe that. If you can get some figures and prove I me wrong, I will pull us stats. I was only looking at this the other day. While, while you were looking at that, can I just replied to Gaming Panda in a chat saying that maybe the game they tested was well made, but these games are mass produced and like anything mass produced, quality may vary on disc or files on disc. I'm afraid that no. the games don't work like that. Digital representation of the game will be the same every time. If and if there's they, a corrupt if, file, it just won't work. It won't work at all. Yeah, it won't even install probably. But uh, yeah, it's unfortunately that's not the way it works. So every game with digital distribution, every version is exactly the same as what's, every other version. What's happened here is the studio that's done the port, and, and by port we mean they basically 
rewritten the code or writing something called written a shim of some sort which is kind of a little bit of code that kind of translates the original code into whatever platform it needs to needs to sit on they the, the, the people who've written that they haven't tested it properly that's what's happened or they haven't had enough time to test it or they haven't had enough money or or anything like that from the publisher it'll be so we do it we don't know and we'll never know because unless someone leaks it there's 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 a lot of problems in the gaming industry in general i'm gonna make a little bit of a retraction yeah uh, not um i can't paste it in the chat so louis might have to do that for me and uh, chris can't view it unless it's in chat i am I, I cannot <laughs> well, that is a representation of the the proportion of games released on each platform holy shit exactly now to me that says that the pc gaming industry is much bigger it might not be as profitable no, it would be as popular oh, no, because no. games but, are at half the price. But, but it's a much bigger, is in much widespread, much more people involved industry. Um, no, no, I, I, I disagree there. Just because Steam has such a huge amount of release, releases doesn't mean that more people are buying them. I, I think didn't it, say that. Well, that's what I was talking about. That's what I'm saying. I yeah, think. that's why I said I will make a little bit of a retraction. But I still class that as being a bigger industry because there's more in it. Well, again, remember that. Profitable. Remember that the vast majority of games released on Steam are, well, these days at least, anyway, are indie games. Indie games, yeah. Or, yeah. or early access that are never finished. So, yeah. in terms well, we weren't of talking about last week about the likes of Xbox getting its own early access system. I'm sure but, that PlayStation aren't going to be that far. Off the well, they're not, and we we know we know for a fact that these are going to be very highly regulated and and carefully kind of orchestrated uh, early access releases. It's not going to be anything like Steam. I'm pretty sure of that. I, again, I don't know that for certain, but I'm, I'm pretty sure that will be the case. Yeah, so... Batman I Arkham Knight. Graphics are fun. I'm still going to give it some chance. I, I need to do a bit of config tweaking, basically, before I can actually give you a proper review on it. And hopefully, again, by next week, whatever issues I may encounter may be fixed, because apparently um, the Rocksteady are taking it very seriously and are working on it, as they've said. So... Don't know how well, seriously they're that, taking it. Yeah, I'm saying I don't know how seriously they're taking it if it's actually got out and it's it's this. It'd be great yeah. if they issued a press release saying, "Ah, we don't care. We, people oh, bought it now. We've we got your money. <laughs> <laughs> But they have to say this because because again, Steam now has um, refunds available, don't doesn't it? Um, you can now re get refunded on any game after seven before seven days if you haven't played a certain amount of time on it. Yeah, yeah, that's quite interesting actually. Yeah. Um, so Steam's doing that, and plus you can take a 360 game or a. Or Does that apply PS to all games then, or just uh, early access and stuff like that? No, everything, every game. Right, but so it's it, not protection against uh, people who are doing dodgy early access stuff, which I thought yeah. it would be for. Well, it's that, and you know, if you, if I buy a game and I'm like, oh, I've just spent forty quid on that, and I don't like it, I haven't played more than two hours, send it back. Yeah, there's got to be a certain cut off. Yeah, you know, yeah, like if you have only played, you know, an hour or two, and you just think this this really isn't for me, it's not what it said on the tin. But you also have to do it within a certain time period as well, so it's something like two weeks or a month, I can't remember. Um, right. But if, if it's after that time period, because all the games that I've got on my Steam list that I haven't played that I bought years ago, I, I can't get a refund on those. I think I'm, I think actually for the first few weeks of it going live, you could, or something like that, but it's it's now it's at a point where you... It's, it's yeah. fair, I think. I think they've done it in a fair way. <coughs> okay. Um, Mythalos said, wasn't it def delayed for months? And I'm sure that the sh Shum is talking about Batman Arkham Knight. And I don't know, because I don't really care what about, about delays. I'm not particularly <laughs> I'm not particularly bothered. There's that many games to play that I can... I'm happy I've, if something um, gets delayed. Just on Arkham Knight, I've got a friend who, um, who's got a PS4. And he got Arkham Knight. And he is blown away by it. Hmm. He, he absolutely adores it. He loves it. He has to stop talking about it all day. So... I, I'd like to see what you think after you've given it a bit of time and you've got past the issues. If it's absolutely anything, well, I said I haven't experienced any issues yet, but I haven't played it enough to experience any. I don't think yet. But then I've, again, I've been able to play it yesterday. Okay, forget about that. For fuck's <laughs> sake, I think that was something to do with my machine because the problem is, is I run SSIS processes on my machine all day, and that's like huge memory taking ETL processes while I'm doing work. So I, my computer is knackered by the end of the day, and it needs a reboot, and I probably didn't reboot it, and you know. I said knackered. I don't mean like. He's you, you know on the I mean. table like this. I'm trying to. I'm trying to dumb it down for the for the <laughs> for people who aren't developers, basically. Um, 
Right, so yeah, I'm. Um, I, I'm I think I'm going to love it I've, because it's got good, pretty decent reviews so far, and I loved Arkham uh, Arkham Asylum and Arkham City. I loved both of them. I haven't played the other one. What was the What was the big one? Arkham Arkham Diner. <laughs> <laughs> no, there was the two that Rocksteady did, which were brilliant, and then there's the other one, Origins, Arkham Origins, that was it. And I haven't played that. I've got it. I got it on Steam, but I, I didn't bother with it. Uh, all right, so let's move on. Move on to the next game. Can I talk... I haven't got this in the list, but can I talk about the X One, Xbox One Elite controller? Because I've actually seen some more stuff on this. Okay, yeah, you were uh, talking since, about this last week. We, yeah. we mentioned it last week, um, and you said it was all kind of configurable. Um I've watched a video about it, and it's not as configurable as we thought it was going to be. So it doesn't come apart. You don't get to wheel both sides of it like we thought, uh, like a VR controller. What you can do is you can change the D-pad for a faceted one or a, a normal plus-shaped D-pad. You All can right. change the thumbsticks for long throw thumbsticks or like um, rounded, like con 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 convex. Okay. It'll be convex. The the. Oh, yeah. out over. Yeah, out oh, over nice. ones like the like the uh, the original Dual Shock. Yeah. Um, not the original Dual Shock, the, the little ones, and you also the buttons, you can change the panels underneath. Can't yeah, you? You, there's there's basically um, panels underneath which you can take off and turn upside down. They're like triggers, extra triggers underneath. You can also change the distance of the trigger as well, so you can have a long trigger, or you can switch it to a short. Yeah, with the hair, trigger. airline trigger. So the, it's one hundred and fifty dollars, though. This is the mm. big thing. So it's going to be about hundred quid, or probably one hundred and fifty quid, because let's face it, they don't do any yeah. kind of no <laughs> currency conversion when they come up for you. So it's a lot of money for a controller that is basically just letting you swap the tops of it uh, off. Uh, it, it to me that sounds like a gimmick. I don't need a better controller. I'm perfectly happy with the controller I've got. But as gaming gets more serious, you're going to see this. Well, look what happened with PC gaming when pro gaming became a thing. You know, we used to we used to pro game before it was pro gaming, you know. We used to play at competitions and go to LAN parties and do all the stuff. But that when that became a thing, Razer started releasing stuff, Alienware started releasing stuff. We had very, very specific I mean core, my entire desktop now is is adorned with Corsair gaming stuff because it's the best stuff that I wanted for what I want it for, but it's good for general use anyway. Um but yeah, it's 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 gonna happen. You're always going to have extra peripherals, but I think it's going to get people are going to want more customization on consoles as as time goes on. See, I, I think another thing about it as well is that Microsoft have realised that a good proportion of their hardware uh, controllers is going on the PC market. Like for example, I've got a 360 controller here. Lou, I know you've got one. Chris, you've got one. Yep. So that's three out of three that are using a Microsoft product somewhere over there for their PC with the Steam controller on the verge of kind of becoming mainstream, I think they're a little bit concerned that they're going to lose market share there. So they've had to release something that would appeal to the PC market and making it configurable certainly does that. But you, you said that exactly the same time that Mythalor posted in chat. The new controller may have been released in reply to the Steam controller. Literally, you said Steam controller, he posted that. <laughs> well, do you not know that me and Mythalor are both one and the same you person? You are the same person, yeah. yeah. It's like Quato. He's actually under my stomach. He was <laughs> that would explain why you weren't on the show when Mythalor... Well, you, you weren't, were you, when Mythalor was on? No. No, yeah, you just morphed into... You, you're a Doppler, aren't you? No, it was just do... like the camera pointing at my stomach. <laughs> How do we all feel about these kind of pro pro level joy pads then? I think because it's a load of shit. It does seem very strange because joy pads have always been you basically get what you're given. You get you get the, the standard joy pad with the, the machine which is the best one, and you get a load of cheap rip offs. And that's all you need for a console. So the fact that they introduce one which is very configurable seems like a weird step, like almost to trying to Bring pro gaming to consoles in a, w a strange way. Well, pro I know the pro already, gaming. I yeah. know that it already exists on consoles, but they're, they're doing the pro gaming thing of all the peripherals now as well, which is slightly, slightly well, strange. Do you, not, do you not think that this is going to be a case of you know, like when you play a, a, a sports competition, everybody has to wear the same kind of kit, otherwise someone's going to be cheating. You know, that, that's that's it's going to be the same thing. They're still going to have constraints saying, right, this competition, really. it's on. What? Uh, well, they don't do that currently with pro gaming, do they? They have, they have they're all like um, sponsored by different companies and have to use their joysticks and mice and stuff like that. Okay, well we know we all know that PC gaming is very different, but when I'm talking about um, consoles, I imagine 
they're probably going to go right if one person brings their own control pad and it's got certain advantages over another one for whatever reason it's got different dpi settings or anything like that and they've learned to use it and hone it other people must also have that advantage and that they can use that pad if they want to you know it's not going to be you brought your own pad and you play with it yeah mind you i suppose the pc gamers do that with pcs don't they They're they do do that PCs. If, if if you can afford to have the best PC on the market and someone can only afford a, like, you know, a middle-of-the-line one, the person with the high-spec one's got an advantage. Well, yeah. let's face it, if you're a pro gamer, you're not you, buying your own PC. You're getting it yeah. furbished you would buy Alienware or someone. Yeah, and you use it just for gaming. It's it's that kind of thing, isn't it? Yeah, you know, do, do some video editing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> got a Microsoft Word document or... <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it looks like you're trying to do a headshot. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's, let's move on. Uh, I put this one in, so shall I? Go on, talk, talk your way. Dwayne The Rock this Johnson this wants to star in a movie adaptation of the 1986 game Rampage. Now, does anyone remember what Rampage is? <laughs> He's going to be George. Uh, George, Lizzie and Ralph, they're basically three giant, um, giant monsters who smash up uh, cities, City. but they're actually the, the real people who get mutated into these giant monsters and smash up the city. And the way you die in that game is that you get shot to ship by all of the people and bombs and things like that, and you shrink back down to a nude version of yourself, like yeah. the human, and walk off covering Told your private parts. I, I was only playing this on the Atari ST about two or three months ago um, with Sal, and, and I'd never played it before. I knew what it was and I'd seen it, but I'd never played it when it came out originally, and uh, we could not figure out how to get up buildings. I had no oh, just fucking idea. Press up. Stand next to him and press up. I'd, well, yeah, I was I was up and ang angling upwards, uh, sideways. I was trying to press buttons, just standing really... next to him and pressing up. No idea. If you get yeah. really good at it, you can jump off buildings and grab onto other buildings. Go onto the one, yeah. And you can also um, yeah yeah figure that out yeah. Whenever you used to get the screaming woman out the window, you used to be able to grab hold of and then either throw away or eat her. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Um, but they did a remake of it, didn't they? Um, uh, world it tour recently. Yeah, world tour. Um, no, 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 the, game, no, there was another one. Right. Um, yes, I think was, there was. I can't remember. There was world two. There was world tour that was PlayStation and N sixty four, and then they made one that was. Um, Rampage Total Destruction. Total Destruction. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't really think you. it. I don't really think it works on a very modern level. I think it it should have remained very much a classic. Yeah, but it's, they're, it's, they're making a movie of it, really? How can you make a movie of Rampage? I don't know, well, it's based on movies. I mean, it's basically ripping off. Um, Godzilla and King Godzilla. Kong, isn't right, it? Right. Now, I didn't read the article, so is he? does he just want to? Is this clickbait, or is this or, He wants or to. He signed happening? on for it, and there's someone writing the story. Right, so he signed up for it, is it? Yeah, sorry? It's not Uwe Ball, is it? No, it's not Uwe Ball, no. He's not making any more movies, is he? He took a huff. <laughs> I know, but he's took a huff before. I don't think he'd have the budget to make Rampage, either. No, no, it is. It is. It's Uwe Ball. What? Are you, are you joking? No. Go on the IMDP. Uh, the IMDP. The IMDB page the rampage. Right. So while while no, you two do that sorry, let's let's move on. <laughs> because That's uh, a two thousand and nine release. So Fallout Four, uh, now this is this is definitely clickbait, this this uh, this article, because this is responding to the uh, Arkham Knight release yesterday basically. Fallout 4 is not constrained on PC, thirty FPS but it's gonna be thirty FPS on the PS4 and Xbox One. Now again this is just technical limitations. People keep going on about 30 FPS, 60 FPS, and all these. It doesn't make the game unplayable playing it in 30 FPS, but it's no. annoying as a PC player that you're, if your PC is capable of doing 60 FPS, why don't you let us? That's the yeah, only reason for it. We're not, we're not on a fixed platform. We all have different machines with different powers. There's no reason to constrain the frame rate on a PC at all. There's no reason. No, there isn't. But this is um, this 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 particular article, this Fallout 4 thing, is just basically saying, yeah, we're better than you again. You know, they've already proved that at E3, so why do they have to keep going on about it? Shut up, Bethesda. We love you, but. But shut up, yeah. Um, the Final Fantasy VII remake will not be yes. a like for like. Yeah, I read some of this actually uh, just after we finished the last time. Now we've got some quotes here from uh, Tetsuya Nomura, who's the director. He, yeah, he was the guy who designed the um, the characters in Final Fantasy VII, so he's the one who drew the characters in place of um, Amano. All right. Okay. Uh, 
So he we've also got, did um, a bit of the story. My goal with the remake is to make it apply to the current era, the current generation of players that are going to be coming into contact or playing with Final Fantasy VII for the first time through this remake. Expected, I have to be honest. <laughs> it's going to be so dumbed down and simple, isn't it? I hope it isn't dumbed down. They, they, they cannot get rid of the materia system. Now, they've also said that they're going to change the story a little bit. Well, they said that they may change the story, which means they're going to change the story a little bit. Um, they Obviously, because they're going to have voice, they've all, he's also pretty much confirmed, not directly, but via some of his quotes, he's confirmed that there's going to be voice acting. There's going to be. Uh, there has to be, as I said. It's modern. He keeps talking about modern storytelling techniques, so it's everything. It's full motion, not full motion video. It's in-game... Um, probably in-game uh, footage, etc. Uh, the what's it called? In-game in cinematics. That's what I was looking for. Yeah. Um, uh, and another quote he's come out with is, I, "I want to make it so that it's relevant to the modern era, as well as having an element of surprise." So this suggests that he, again, may be changing the story, trying to tweak things or change things so they make more sense. Maybe it's going to be shit, isn't it? I'm gonna I'm gonna give it the benefit of the doubt. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be pessimistic and optimistic get it. about this. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm just I'm just saying that I don't want to change it so much that it's unrecognizable, but make sure it's something fresh and new, but still recognizable as Final Fantasy VII. And I just those words just haunt me. I just don't want them those words to be existing ever. I don't. Somewhat, gaming Panda uh, fifty gaming fifty three Panda has just said in chat. I don't think Final Fantasy VII will ever come out at all. Too much money. I think, uh, I think that's... They, they took some balls to announce that they were going to do this remake, so they've got to follow through with you, it now. You don't do this without... I mean, especially if you're in a position as Square, who... Square Enix... Or, or Enix. What are they called now? Square, Square Enix. Enix. Oh, they're still Square, Square Enix, right? Square Enix, yeah. Square Enix, who... You know, we've, they've had some financial issues. They've had some, uh, some failures recently. Uh, Final Fantasy has been going downhill, so Seven is a. Is, no, I wouldn't say it's the saving grace, but remaking it is what we've been screaming for as fans forever. But the fact that they said they seem to be concentrating on making it for newcomers, new players, makes me think that it may be vastly different. But if it, well, I don't understand why they're doing that because. I kind of do, but let's face it, the vast majority of people are going to want to play this game are people who already know about Final Fantasy VII and have probably yeah. played it. And that's the problem with it, because what, the original Final Fantasy VII sold how many copies? Oh, millions, lots. wasn't it? It was Two a big million? seller. Three million? Lots, uh, I don't know. Lots and lots, How yeah. many copies did the last Call of Duty sell? Oh, probably a lot more than that. So what they're doing now is they're trying to reintroduce the game, but going for a much... Because the market since Final Fantasy VII has grown exponentially. Mm. There's millions and millions and millions more games out there now. So they're going for the wider market. Something like that. Yeah. It's a money thing they're going for. They're not doing it for nostalgia. They're not doing it as a treat for the fans. But they're doing it to try and get money. Yeah, but they have to. Uh, they yeah, have to, to keep, to keep the, themselves afloat. These are huge studios that have got a lot of money invested in them and a lot this of money why outgoing remakes every day. should never be done by the original studio. Like Black Mesa. If that was going to be done by Valve, it would have never came out. What do you it's mean it wouldn't have come out? Why wouldn't it have come out? Because, <coughs> because Valve wouldn't have put the money, time and effort in in order to remake it because they've already done it once and they would have seen it as not a profitable venture. Mythalaw is, um, is, ask is asking... Mythalaw is asking, do you think that Final Fantasy VII will have micropayments? How, who knows? Uh, if it does, seriously, I will personally go out there and I will give every member of e uh, Square Enix AIDS well, let's 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 remember now that the um, the iOS versions had micropayments. You could basically buy um, boosters, was it, like cloud boosters, where it like fill up your gill and your your Phoenix Downs and stuff, and you paid for that. There's a special place reserved in hell for people who do stuff like that. You know what? Yeah, I've read I read something recently, and it was actually about one of the articles we're going to talk about later about micropayments. And the studio's excuse for putting micropayments in was for people who do not have time to play games. People who, like, I mean, I, I would say I'm someone who doesn't have time to play games that much these days. But they're, they're saying that it's to to allow them to progress in the game quicker. Let's cut the bullshit because it, it's because it's the only way to make money these days. Because you've got to sell the games for pittance, and you pittance? can't sell games. Well, sixty quid these, is not a pittance. No, no, sixty quid is not pittance. But these sort of things, where they, these these games that are like free or tw two quid or something, that's the way that they make their money. And what they've realised now is they can pull that into the full price games and be really greedy and have DLC. 
I don't know how much is the Witcher. The Witcher DLC is the same as the Witcher, isn't it? It's the right. same price. Sixty for the, quid. Uh, season. Sixty it's been quid free so far. Sixty quid times a million copies is six six hundred million. You well, didn't 60 just million. Sixty that quid. No, I'm a dick. I don't know why I needed to calculate that. <laughs> 60 million, sorry. And uh, yeah, I don't know why I calculated it. I'm sorry. <laughs> you I'm, really, you got it wrong. <laughs> I'm really sorry. It's because there's no commas in it. <laughs> um, but that's a lot of fucking money. I don't care who you are. I don't care what studio you are. That's enough. That is enough yeah, but money. In terms, in terms of raw profit, I mean, you look at what Angry Birds, the, the amount of money spent on Angry Birds versus the amount of money it made is way more. Oh, yeah. Like, the, 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 the ratio is much better. If they can make a game for Peanuts, like Flappy Birds, and make a load of money from it, even though the guy didn't like making a lot of money from it, apparently. Oh, yeah. Um, he's now making more games, by the way. He is, yeah. He made, he, made a, he made that helicopter one, didn't he, which was a bomb. But the point is, if you can make a game cheap and then make a lot of money from it, that's preferable to making a game expensive and making a bit of profit from it. Of course, of course. Which is why I don't think that the big studios should be doing remakes. Because I don't... For me, a remake is something born out of love. As opposed yeah. to some are born out of like desire for market share or to make money, and if Final Fantasy VII would have been would have been made by an indie studio, fan run, it would be the game we all want it to be. It's not going to be. It's like the X XCOM remake, whatever that was, Legacy or whatever it's called, Longhorn. That was it, XCOM Longhorn. It was a uh, using a modern engine, but it was the original XCOM game. Something like that. Yeah, you, look, you look blank. You two should know about this kind of thing. Long haul. Or maybe it no, was, I remember maybe, Freedom Ridge was the uh, remake they were trying to make. Maybe it was um, something to do with XCOM en Enemy Unknown and it was like a really hard mode game version of it. Like extremely hard or something. I can't remember. Anyway, but that, that was made by fans, not by the studio. And it was, you know, very, very well received and done with love and <coughs> fixed a hell of a lot of the bugs in the main game as well. Well, Xenonauts is, um, is fan made as well. And that's, that's balls on accurate to the original, except it's set in the 60s. Right. Um, and so, then so you I can tell that's that. a labor of love. It, it's, it's, it's pretty much a perfect uh, remake of XCOM. But it is a remake in the true sense of the word. It's not like. Than the new one, which is just like a turn based strategy game that's a Themed bit like it. it. Yeah. yeah. So, on the same uh, note of Final Fantasy VII, then we've, uh, we've also got the Final <laughs> Fantasy VII, the original Final Fantasy VII HD PC port or PC to PlayStation 4 port. Has there Why been is there HD in there? Because uh, apparently it's, I know that's what I mean. How are they going to make this HD? They're not. Basically, uh, uh, yeah. Maybe maybe they're gonna have to up the res of some stuff, aren't they? If they did that, but well, yeah, but they can't up the res of the backgrounds because all they've got is the original low quality versions. Yeah, I, d I don't fully understand this, but apparently it's coming. Right. I don't know what the I don't know what the delay is. I mean, it's not like it can be hard to do. We've already got a PC version of it. But what the interesting thing I did find from the story is there's an iOS version coming as well. I'd be very interested in a, a portable version of it, although I'm not sure I'll be able to fit it on my phone. Because I'm sure it'll be a few gigs. Hmm. Well, I've just got a new phone, so I will be able to, but it'll probably have micropayments, so probably won't bother with it. I've always liked the idea of that. I do have a PSP somewhere, which I could probably get it on now, but Who I've always liked the idea. I, I bought a PSP shortly after it came out. I've got a PSP. Yeah, we bought it for Twisted Metal, didn't we? Twisted yeah. Metal, uh, whatever it is. It's one of them. Yeah, it was basically a really good Twisted Metal two follow up, right. and you could play um, well anywhere like locally, couldn't you? Yeah, within frequency range. Fair enough. Yeah, um, yeah. Final Fantasy is going to be horrible. Now, this is this is not this is just a remake of the original. Uh, not uh, sorry, this is the HD port of the re original to PS4. Can we just say iOS. HD anymore? Because it's not HD and it never will be HD. Well, it's got to be HD to some extent because you couldn't have the, the, the original resolution on PS4. Of course you can. That's how the PC version is. Actually, no. But the original point. resolution was 320 by 240. Oh, yeah, it was. I see. I see. So what they're doing is they're doing a, PS, they're doing a PC to PS4 port. So yeah. it's not going to be the original PlayStation version, PSX version. It's the it PC the version. version. Oh, right. I, that's the first one I played, actually. I've got, that, got it on disc. No, you, no you'll have played the, the original PC port. This is, this is a new one which they did for Steam. Oh, right. Okay. Which has got, uh, it's got the micropayment stuff in it. Or, um, uh, oh, why, why? Why do these things exist? This is yeah. probably why I don't know about them. <sighs> right. 
Yeah. Uh, news that we're not particularly interested in, but it's uh, y- again because it's Ubisoft news. But the the, the division's <laughs> um, beta website is now up, so that means you can sign up for the multiplayer team based. I don't know, climb up a tower or up. There was a video um, posted the other day actually with some gameplay, and I couldn't be bothered watching it, even though I really liked the look of the division when it first came out. Now that I, now that I'm, it's ingrained in me that Ubisoft never deliver what they say they're going to deliver. I can't be as watching it. It's like I know it's going to be shit. And the, the, it's, it's going to be a timed Xbox One exclusive as well. I didn't, timed. I didn't even know they still did this timed exclusive bollocks. It's just marketing licensing agreements, isn't it? It's but. Those two consoles must be so so scrabbling for decent games. Yeah, well, they are at the moment, yeah. Well, just look at that uh, graphic thing I posted in. I, I, was... I would never have guessed that the Wii U had almost triple the amount of games. I would. I totally There's would. not a lot out for the Wii U. Well, uh, uh, you think about again. You we forget about Nintendo's yeah, Eastern market, the don't Japanese we? Japanese market, yeah. Because I mean, they they. They blow all of the other consoles out of the, the water. I mean, look, just look at the Wii. The Wii had more games than the PlayStation. Not many more, like looking at it, but it had more games yeah. than the PlayStation Three did. Have well, we ever been in the games as a three hundred and sixty? Oh, actually, no, it didn't. Have well, we the... ever been? Sorry, have we ever been in a position where we've been the owners of consoles now for more than a year, and we still don't have like the games that we were waiting for? You see what I mean? It's like people have bought these consoles are waiting and they're still waiting for good games. Well, I always wait for the first game that, you know, I'm ready for. I got mine for Ground Zero, Zeroes for a 20 minute demo, basically. Um, and I got it and I don't regret getting it for that. But I'm now glad that things like, um, uh, Sha- Sha- what's the, not Shadow of the Colossus. Not Icon, um, the new Ga- one. Guardian thing, wasn't it? Uh, Last Guardian, that's Last it. Guardian. I'm now ga- glad things like The Last Guardian have been announced because that, that's going to be an Xbox... Uh, sorry, P- I imagine it's going to be a PlayStation exclusive. But isn't it weird that you're still waiting for those games and you bought the console like over a year ago? And I have also think I've made the decision today. It's not weird. It's just what consoles are like. But remember, we're no- we never buy a PC to-, to play games. We buy a PC and use it constantly and wait for the games to come out. So it's very different for PC I just, games. Every time I've bought a console in the past, there's been good games ready to play on it. Yeah, there's been no you... good release titles, has there? Oh, no, well, there's no. Destiny and that was a flop. Destiny was sh- You say flops. flop, it's not. People are still playing it. It's It, it was maybe yeah. a commercial flop because it cost seven gazillion yeah, to make but people still play with sticks in the street it doesn't mean it's better there's like not better stuff out there <laughs> don't know i like i like sticks playing sticky i like you like a sticky. good stick yeah um in response to i host cod in uh, in chat we are talking about games yeah. <laughs> that is what this game is about <laughs> this is this game this this show is about um currently we're just talking about the division uh, which we're, t- we're just going through the news articles uh, things like that that have been announced since last wednesday um, so yeah, it's a, it's a timed Xbox One exclusive, The Division. It's going to be another crappy Ubisoft thing. I just thought I'd bring it up because I wanted to have another whinge about Ubisoft and I think we should have a little Ubisoft rant section every week and it'll just be me saying the same thing every week. Stop buying Ubisoft games. Stop it. Stop it now. Etc. Yeah. So 40, 40 minute Metal Gear Solid 5 gameplay demo and uh, microtransactions in Metal Gear Solid 5 as well. But apparently, and not this is, pay to win. This, no, apparently they're not pay to win, which d- it doesn't matter. There's still microtransactions, and it still means, by the sounds of it, when you when you if you listen to the if you watch the video and you listen to the the guy doing the the voiceover, he basically says that by the sounds of it, you can buy most of the weapons and things in the game via microtransactions, but they are all available anyway within the game. It's just for people who want to buy them early, and and knowing knowing what sounds kind of are, like a pay to win type of system. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's. Oh, actually, there's a Metal Gear Online component as well, so I don't know if that's going to play any part with the um, microtransactions. But I mean, I won't be. I never, never, ever buy microtransaction stuff. I've bought um, Call of Duty maps uh, for Modern Warfare One and Two, I think, when I was playing with my friends online. But I wouldn't really consider them microtransactions. They were like DLC, I suppose. But that's pretty much the only DLC I've bought that hasn't been part of some bundle or free giveaway or deal, you know? I'm not I'm not into it. Still a little bit. I did watch the um, the Phantom Pain 
trailer, the E3 trailer, which was quite impressed with actually. It was very story driven, but it was a uh, pretty cool good music and stuff it was but, uh I'm, I'm i just watched the first 20 minutes of that video uh, that i've just posted in chat and my god i can't wait for it now i don't i didn't want to spoil too much but i didn't realize how much effort they've put into it and how different it is from the other games and uh it's it's it looks like it's very heavy on story still which is quite kind of good for the metal gear solid solid series well because there isn't much story in the normal well, no, but it, it's like it's it's part of the course for these games, I guess. Is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I mean, again, I haven't re. It's always story driven, but apparently, they, one of the comments he made on that video is that you can complete it in any way you want. So that should Yay! That, that, you should love that, Lou. You should enjoy that. It, yeah, I'm not sure we'll be able to do a playthrough of it though, because if it's an open world game, that'll be immense to try and complete. Surely, mind you, I suppose if we just went for the story and we missed all the side missions out, we could still do a, a run through of it. For those who are interested, we are doing a Metal Gear Solid uh, A to Z kind of run through on our YouTube channel at the moment. And run away! Think, run away! <laughs> we've done we've done Metal Gear Solid one, two, and three. Uh, we are going to do four at some point, but we haven't got round to starting that yet. In terms um, of A to Z, we stopped at K, which is kicking soldiers in the head repeatedly, or, or, or just shooting everything. And, uh, <laughs> or we stopped at F, which is fuck stealth, basically. <laughs> I was going to say L, complete <laughs> lack of stealth. <laughs> and that's only because I'm playing it in front of everybody. That's my excuse. Yeah, because when he, when we're not there and I was watching, he actually goes through and 100% it without getting seen or hit once. No, 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 I, I reload it constantly. <laughs> and I do 100% it without getting seen or hit once, but I reload saves. I spend most of my time when I play Metal Gear Solids watching loading screens. Uh, Borderlands Humble Bundle out this week. For anyone everyone who's interested, it. for anyone, anyone who doesn't own it, yeah. Um, everyone owns it. <laughs> everyone does own Borderlands. Yeah, I, I actually looked in my uh, in my list to see if I didn't have something on uh, on my Steam list, but I don't actually have the DLC for Borderlands Two, so it may be worth it for that. It's all good DLC as well. I know, I know, you said that, and it's just one of those things. Am I ever going to play it again, though? Um, it's it's quite fun at a LAN, but you need like a good run at it, don't you? Hey, Chris, have you played the um, the Tiny Tina DLC. Is that, uh, did, did the, the, the did RPG I, one. Did I not just say I haven't got any of the oh, DLC? Oh, you haven't got any of them, right? Okay, sorry, I didn't see hear any. Yeah, that one is absolutely super. As DLC goes, that's probably the best DLC I've played for any game. It's pretty much a full game you, in you've, itself. You've beamed about it, and to be fair, I liked Borderlands 2, and I should really have had it, but I haven't. Yeah, I haven't it's yet. um that, that that's a fantastic DLC. Borderlands 2 is one game that I've played the hell out of. We got we've done so much in it. I played a lot, but I think at the time you were you played it without me when you started doing the DLC stuff, and I don't know why specifically. But why we played without you? Well, I know why you don't play games with me, but <laughs> let's move on. Uh, <laughs> Skyrim mod for co-op multiplayer, which is in the early kind of startings. Startings. Yeah, I watched this. So basically, you can walk around with a friend. Um, you can't do anything, so you, all you can do is walk around. You can't you can hit explore, anything. and that's it. You can't basically, touch each other. yeah. Um, it probably has been in the works for a while now. It's been, it, but recently it's been added up so that there's animations in it. Before you all walked around like in the standard T pose. Uh, it looks pretty interesting. I'd like to just walk around the world, to be honest. Well, I, 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 yeah, but a bit of combat would be cool. I've done way too much walking around in that game. I've done over 250 hours of walking around in Skyrim, so. Uh, it's either it's one of those things that now and it even says this in the article if if you want to contribute to the development of it and you want to give some bug feedback and things get involved with it because you can now connect to servers and play with friends and that and it looks like it's a peer to peer as well there's no server involved no there is a server oh there's, sorry there is a server but it's one yeah, of server you that would host it yeah, yeah. Um, what I will say so would that be that, sorry go ahead though. Well, I'm just going to say that the a lot of the quests will be broken. Most of the content will be broken in the game. That's what I was going to say, because it won't... It, it, unless it's been specifically designed for it to be multiplayer, which it hasn't, a lot of the quests won't work, surely. Yeah, yeah. they're basically going to have to write off most of the quests, because then it's not going to work. There's going to be situations where it'll lock a door behind you, and if the, the other player isn't there, then you're screwed. Yeah. So, there is going to be... It's basically, they're going to have to get the combat working, and, and then basically put in multiplayer quests... So don't get your hopes too high for it, but it'd still be no. cool to walk around and beat up dragons and stuff. Yeah. Again, I mean, I, I don't know if it's too far on now for me that I've, I've, I have love Skyrim, don't get me wrong, but if I wanted to play it again, I'd have to start all over again from the start because I, I couldn't really go back into the save I had, you know? 
I'd be so lost. I'd be stuck in the middle of a dungeon somewhere, uh, and you know, in the middle of a quest with a load of items at my feet, going, "What was I going <laughs> to do next?" <laughs> yeah, I was like, I I'm sure there was something really important I had to do here. Yeah, and then I got called. I called, got called away to to do some. Uh, wife wanted me to do some DOI or something. I know what you mean. <laughs> like, I've actually tried to load some of my saves from Skyrim, and I've just found myself like, "Oh God, what the hell was I doing? I can't I play this." I, I was, I was actually uh, encumbered, stood on top of a fort with a load of dead bodies around me. So. <laughs> I'd, I'd just destroyed a fort what a full night. of bandits. <laughs> Handful of cerebral brandy. Yeah. And then I walked up to a dragon, got nailed by it because I forgot how to do anything got in the game. Nailed by yeah, it. Yeah, because I couldn't. Because it was my old config as well, which is like a, you know, W A S my strafing on my mouse keys and stuff. Yeah. It's mental. Strafing on your mouse keys. <laughs> <laughs> Not wrong with it. Sure. You um, got, Lou was a southpaw. You like you know who uses rudder pedals to strafe with. <laughs> <laughs> it's the only me that actually plays games properly. Steering wheel to play fucking yeah. steering <laughs> wheel to <wave> with. <laughs> um, right, uh, the the Sky, Sky, we just talked about Skyrim multiplayer co-op. So that this is something that doesn't particularly interest us, but I thought it was interesting in terms of technical uh, implementation. Um, whoever it is who's, who does COD Advanced Warfare, whatever studio it is, Dice. No, no what's it, Dice? someone else it's now. Battlefield. Oh yeah. Um, uh, it is. It is twenty to nine in the UK, by the way. Uh, Gaming Panda, uh, at nine at night. The um, anyway, Infinity so, Ward. Uh, there's, a, there's a hard. It's apparently, th th they're saying that they have reached a hard memory limit on the PS3 and the Xbox One, so they can't add any more guns for for DLC or for whatever else they do. I, I haven't played the game, so I don't know what it is, but they can't add any more guns. Now, I would had a look at the specs for the PS3 and the and the Xbox One. I didn't realise how low the memory was. It was actually 512 meg on the 360 and 256 megabytes on the PS3. Do you, do you know how much memory was in the, place, the original PlayStation? Oh, eight, Have a guess. Eight kilobytes or something. Two megs. Two megs, yeah. Two megs of RAM. But the thing is... No, I, I didn't mean, have two megs of uh, memory and two megs of video RAM. Uh, it had separate video. Th this is this is just RAM. This isn't video RAM or GDR yeah. RAM. I think the PlayStation, PlayStation, th uh, th sorry, hang on. The 360 had something like a gig of GDDR three or something like that. Yeah, which you'd need to do PhD to be honest. Yeah, but I mean, they're saying that they've reached a hard memory limit, and I'm not sure if they're just saying that because they don't want to support old consoles, or or they actually have reached a memory limit. Probably a bit of both, I imagine. I imagine there yeah. probably is ways to optimise it, lower yeah, the poly counts on things, but they just can't be arsed. Yeah. Anyway, just a quick thing, just wanted to mention. Uh, people Can Fly turns independent from EA, which this is good news for me, because I really enjoyed People of People Can Fly's games uh, when they released. They released a game called Bullet Storm, probably 2003 or something like that. It was ages ago now. But it was Bullet Storm wasn't that. Least, um, okay, was it not? Sorry. 2013. Yeah, 2013. The no. game that I remember from uh, from People Can Fly, one of their first big releases, was Painkiller. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I've got that, but I've not played it. <laughs> so Painkiller is a classic. But like, Painkiller pain took over Eddie quick. Eddie Goodway could rapidly yeah. fire a stakes at people, not like the <laughs> type you eat, but big wooden stakes and nail <laughs> things. That was because yeah, it was one of the first games I remember. Um, when we kind of switched from 2D to 3D, where you could get mobbed. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. I know what you mean. What like, you mean yeah, doom, what, doom amounts respect? of enemies. Yeah, yeah right. loads like, of enemies. just loads of enemies, but in a 3D kind of world. When we first switched to 3D, you didn't get mobbed in any game. It was like yeah. like one enemy per like level, so in order to save polygons. But you got mobbed quite regularly on Painkiller. Um, anyway, I'm quite interested in in this news, particularly because Bulletstorm. I don't. Are you sure it was 2013? No, I, th I just saw the date there. So but I don't think 2010. It was. Maybe, it's yeah. it's not that late, but it is. Yeah, maybe I was a bit early with 2003. But um, I'm I'm interested because 2011. Bullet, Bulletstorm Ooh. was really for me. I thought it was a brilliant game, and I really wish that it could have made it multiplayer. Really? Yeah, I thought it was wonderful. I thought the I, I don't think the single player story was any good. I think it was very linear and very predictable, and to be fair, a little bit, a little bit too tongue in cheek. But I really enjoyed the the, the game, the, the the mechanics. I loved the fact that you could, yeah, you had all these skill shots, and you could you could kick people at the cactuses, and you know. You Isn't could... that one of the reasons why it wouldn't have worked multiplayer? Because every time you've done that, it kind of slowed down bullet time. 
Uh, well, that's the thing. They did a, a lead... What was it called? Uh, they did, like, a leaderboard, which was the only online multiplayer aspect, but I'm sure they could have done something that it didn't have to slow down, you know, and you could have played it multiplayer, but I imagine it was quite difficult to get everything working together if they, if they did try it. But I, I'd love to see a multiplayer version of it, and that's what excites me. I'd like to see Bullet Bulletstorm 2, essentially, with multiplayer in it. So were EA one of the reasons why they didn't get a multiplayer bullet stop? Well, we don't know, do we? Um, again, it's another oh, right. one of those internal politics things. But EA, I, I, I think. So, what, I is think it going to be a case of that now? The now they've gone independent. Would they be looking at doing it? Or well, that's they said. They, they said they're working on a title, an unannounced new, brand new title. That doesn't mean anything yet. That could be Bulletstorm Two. That could be a brand new IP. But the thing is, is a studio has now been released from the clutches of a big evil AAA company. Basically, that's the. Uh, so cool how did they become here. independent? Then did they buy themselves clear, or did EA let them go? Or? Apparently, EA let them go. Well, from what from what I can ascertain, they've they've agreed with EA, and EA are happy for them to go independent again. So they've they've let them go they're still working with the unreal engine 4 they're still working with um some of the ea team on some things i don't know what we again they're very sketchy about the details but it's still nice to know that we might have we, again we've got an imaginative studio free with free reign again so does ea still own all the ip well no that was the thing um the, the original <coughs> articles um actually the title of it if you look in the the chat it actually says um people can fly turns independent buys bullet storm ip but they already owned the bullet storm ip somehow so they 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 currently own it. i don't think they sold that to ea so i don't know what happened there i think ea just published it or something i don't i i, I don't know the specifics but they apparently still own it and there's been an addendum to the article saying that the uh, original people but did they do their gears of war judgment as well Yes, they did. Gears of War. I haven't played that. It's a one Gears of War game I haven't played. I have Heard played it. Um, what do you was, reckon? It was. It was. It was good. It wasn't Is that it. Great. <laughs> uh, well, what did you think of um, Gears of War two and three? Because I enjoyed two and three. Is that it, better than? Is it better, better than, than Judgment? Right. Okay. See, I I enjoyed one, two, and three quite a lot. I loved the whole the whole franchise. Judgment felt felt very much like it was tacked on. Right. And it was it was following um, Bard, wasn't it? Bard, Bard yeah. or whatever. Um, and not to say that, yeah, he's he's not the most charismatic of characters anyway. But it, it's it's one of these things where I've read all the books as well, um, so I, it it kind of it, it conflicted with a few ideas that I already had of him. Um, but it was entertaining. Fair enough. Best playing for uh, you know for the twelve fifteen hours it took to complete. Is it a standard Gears of War game, a third-person cover? Game? It's a, it's the same engine, same game, just oh, following never a different even heard of it. story. What, well, Judgment. You, or... you, you didn't play Gears of War two or three, did you? Yeah, I did. You played two with me a little bit. Completed the original. Um, but it's not canon. Um, judgment is not canon. All right. Okay. But um, thanks for that, Steve. Sorry. Um, man. Project Morpheus release date is undecided. I think this is a bit of clickbait, I have to be honest, but it's just basically someone said, we're not sure when we're releasing it yet. Whereas a lot of the other VR headsets are now releasing dates. Now, I've watched a lot of stuff about the VR headsets over E3, and I've uh, seen stuff about the various headsets. The Morpheus seems to be winning in terms of the games it's got. It's got a load of games and some really good games for it. Is that the uh, the PlayStation one? This yeah. is the PlayStation one. Yeah, basically, they, they've what what Sony have done is they've got loads of developers on board to make games for it, rather than focus too much on the hardware. The hardware is pretty bog standard, to be honest. Um, it's nothing to write home about. But the games that they've done for it are really good. But uh, from the looks of it, they've also done some interesting things with the move controller, like put it into a gun and let it be tracked, and so you can you can use it like that. So. Uh, it's quite interesting, actually, the way that they've gone with Morpheus. They like, are, it, it feels like what Nintendo did with the Wii. I like the sound of it because um, some of the things that the, the the technical guys have said, specifically things like, we can you know we can harness the power of the PlayStation. I know it's just a gimmick line, really, but they can harness the power of it because it's integrated into the system, and it's the only one that is really when you think about it. Because the the Xbox One doesn't have a VR headset yet; it may do at some point. Mm. Um, the uh, the Wii uh, Wii U doesn't have one, 
And there's no other consoles that have been announced with a, an integrated headset. Yeah. Everything else is for either mobile phones or for the PC. So well, what what they've actually what they mean by that, and I actually do know what they mean by that. They the, um, they announced it or they showed some of that integration with the machine. Basically, you can have um, asymmetrical multiplayer, so you can have one person with a headset on. And then four people with the pads, and it will it will go to the the headset and to a TV screen. It sort of rendered the game from two different viewpoints, which is uh, pretty cool. So there's one of these games where you basically you got four players against a dragon, and the, the dragon is played by the guy with the headset, and he's got to avoid all the stuff being thrown at him by moving around um, right. and fight back. And all the people play on the pads, and they get like a, a side side view of it, and they're fighting back at the dragon. So it. Um. It can output to two screens. The um, the Oculus is the Xbox VR headset. Is it? Oh yeah, because Microsoft are uh, involved now, aren't they? Yeah. So there you go. Um, I think the stream might have just went down. I'm not 100 percent sure though. Mm, I don't think so. I can still see oh, it. I know. It still looks like it's okay. Um, <clears throat> Yes, I mean, uh, there was also something to do with the fact that they're going to have less latency because it's because they can directly interface with the PlayStation's blah, 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 blah technical mumbo jumbo stuff. But they said because they will, they'll be able to, you know, make sure that it's definitely 60 FPS all the time, for example. And whereas with the place with um, with output from a PC, they can't guarantee that with that's true with VR yeah. headsets. But I don't know. Again, I don't know the technical implementation. I'm not that into it all, so... For me, it does matter a hell of a lot more on VR. You need a solid, at least 60 FPS, but on the um, the, the VR headsets that are coming out next year, there'll be 90 hertz displays. So you need 90 FPS solid now, all the time. Um, as Mythalos just said uh, Nintendo US has rejected VR, which is not surprising considering their success with the Virtual Boy in the 90s. <laughs> It won't be a shake. Oh, that's why they're doing it. It's like did some Nintendo exec just said, "Remember the Virtual Boy? No, we're not doing yeah, it." Yeah. <laughs> so what we're going to do <laughs> about the uh, document VR? Someone's like Virtual Boy. That's did what John you, did got. Did someone say for. Virtual? The thing is, they could ironically release a new headset which looks like the Virtual Boy, and people would buy it because it's retro. Hmm. But I think I mean usually Nintendo are the innovators, whereas here. They're kind of they're really being careful about it, and you know they've already innovated, I suppose, the Vita with the Virtual Boy and failed miserably. But uh, right, twenty five minutes of the Deus Ex Mankind di Mankind Divided gameplay. I had a quick look at like scan through this. I didn't want to spoil it too much for me, but uh, it makes me excited. I know you don't care, Lou. I watched the tech demo of the engine, and it looks the engine looks really nice. It looks like a good looking game. There's some nice tech in there, but I'm not interested in the game. Yeah, well, it's it's rattled my street, and I can't wait for it. I don't uh, understand much of a hate I lose becoming. No more than I ever have was. Ever have was. No, was. you never I, used to be so, uh, so cynical. Yes, I did. You no. Uh, used well, to get excited about games. Yeah, I also used to get pissed off with games that I didn't like the instant I started playing them. You'll seem to remember. Yeah, but I remember you still do. You didn't write games off before you'd played them. Yes, I did. <laughs> I didn't. I hate people like you. I hate you, Lou. Cool. We, just hate we all hate like you. Lou. Chris, you meant about on the subject of VR. Um, you said that you're excited about VR. Yeah, I skimmed past it because I'm not sure if I'm I'm ready to to really talk <laughs> about it. <laughs> so whether it was excitement or just a bit of wind. <laughs> um, I'll, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you. It's it's exciting for me personally, um, and it's the only. The, I've actually been talking to about uh, to a, a few people about it. Over the last few days, and uh, yesterday I was talking to someone, um, or, the, or the other day before that, maybe might be Monday. I was talking to someone, and we accidentally invented an idea for VR. Now I say invented; I'm sure it's been thought of before, and I'm sure that someone's maybe started working on it. In fact, I know it's been thought of before uh, in science fiction, but something that would be really, really awesome for me, and something that I'm actually going to put a bit of time into. I know that it's not possible right now before we go any further. I know, I know exactly what your criticisms are going to be of this before I go into it. Um, Does it involve putting your penis in it? Because I'm sure no. someone's working on that. No, okay. it doesn't. No, it doesn't. Not at all. Um, now, 
I, I know that this isn't going to be possible because of the low resolution of virtual reality at the moment. Okay, that's, that's not insurmountable, though, is it? No, but as soon as it is, I mean, I'm talking about four or five years' time, maybe. This is this. I think this is going to be an absolutely awesome use of virtual reality for me as a developer. We just fucking get on with it. <laughs> <laughs> right, multiple desktops in virtual reality for development work. Now, I know that doesn't sound... It's already been done. Well, it hasn't been done yet. Didn't, hey, virtual uh, desktop, I've been using an app which does it. It's called virtual desktop. It's not the same. Not not what I'm talking about. Now, you're the virtual Could you do that in the 90s uh, with, uh, with Linux? Yeah, you can virtual desktop it, but it's not what I'm talking about here. So let's let's take um, a Stag Beetle. Yes, all of us have used virtual reality uh, Oculus because Lou has an Oculus Rift, and we we've been round his house and played with it. So what I'm thinking of is you know the you know the, the demo that you get with uh, Oculus Rift where you sat at a desk and you can knock things over and stuff. I'm yeah. talking about having monitors or having screens. You know, like I'm talking about um, a Minority Report where he's moving things around. You're talking about and augmented stuff. reality. Well, no, no, I'm not. I am and I'm not. Now, I think this would work in virtual reality and augmented reality. Now, That's stop one stop of the criticizing features. before you let no, me no, finish no, explaining what it is. That's one of the features of the HoloLens whereby you can shot screens up. Um, yes, I mean, how high res is the HoloLens? And HoloLens? The HoloLens is very high. <laughs> <No, no>, HoloLens? <laughs> now, what I'm thinking, no, I've looked at that VR desktop and it's not what it's not what I'm talking about here. Now, the VR desktop's brilliant, don't get me wrong. Yeah, you can look around on a desktop, awesome. But I'm talking about having a desk, a, a physical space within the VR world. Now, you'd need an extremely high res for it to work because, one, we've got 4K monitors out that are out now, but you'd, you'd be able to basically... I'd be able to basically have as many monitors I want, monitors as I want, outputting, uh, win basically Windows or Linux would be able to output virtual desktops, which you can do, and I've been looking at the code for this, um, and then you capture that VR into the VR world, and then you have multiple screens in your VR world, whether it's holo you know, hol hologrammatic oh. ones or physical screens. I don't I, understand how this is different from virtual desktop. That's exactly what it does. It creates a just full an desktop. Yeah, you can put windows anywhere on it's got a snow but it's got a single screen i'm talking about multiple like a physical space i'm talking about when in the virtual virtual the, the, yeah that vr desktop i just clicked on the link it is exactly what i was talking about but that's right in front of your eyes isn't it, isn't um, it? no you can move it you can move it wherever you want it obviously it's right in front of your eyes in terms of it's on a headset but yeah. basically you you set out the distance you want it and it is a full sphere and you can move windows anywhere on that sphere you see, I... And then you can lean into them and lean away from them and, and have things at different... So it's basically, just imagine a desktop with, in three dimensions and it works brilliantly, it's I, just I'd too like low to, res. I'd like to have a go at it, yes, yeah, so it probably is too low res, but I'd like to have a go at it. But the reason that I'd, well, I would like multiple screens and multiple virtual outputs from Windows or from Linux or whatever operating system you're working on, and I'm talking about each monitor output you would normally get so you can configure where the screens are for example and you can basically work like you would normally work because what i the way that i work with my screens is perfect for what i want i don't ever want to really change it however physical space is becoming a problem if i want another two 4k monitors i'm going to need a desk the size of fucking russia you know it's it's getting ridiculous <laughs> the amount of screen space that i need for do, to do my job but it'd be brilliant i mean i'm sure there's people who use a lot more screens than me you know eight screens 12 screens or whatever the traders and that kind of thing i've seen people with a ridiculous amount for certain places but i think having a place where it's a desk you know you can you can basically move move screens around and move and move them uh, move the windows around within the screens as you would normally in windows and then have screens in the virtual world, I think would really work really well. It's maybe... Uh, what? Having, I, ha having I, I don't think it's virtual... overly critical, but that's, that's like nothing new. No, no, it isn't nothing new, but no one's done it yet. Yeah, because we haven't got the hardware that's capable of doing it. As, as soon as you can get a VR headset with a 10K screen on each eye, yeah. they'll do it. Well, that's what... Become... Built in as part of Windows or part of Linux or part of Oculus OS. Yeah, so that, that virtual desktop is already ready to do that sort of stuff, and you can define as many monitors as you want because you basically got infinite desk space. Yeah. Yes, but you you can't do you can't do all the normal window snapping that you normally do within Windows between monitors, etc. No, but that that's not that's not difficult to do. I mean, you you could split into a grid and have it like a video wall, I guess. 
Uh, well, if you, that's, that's, that's basically what I'm talking about. But yeah. having when I'm talking about in the virtual world, like having a desk that looks like your desk, like type thing, because you're going to be at your desk anyway. Why not have something that's related to the? I suppose this is where augmented reality is a better idea for it, though, isn't it? So, but it's it's something. Yeah, that, then you've got proper resolution. Exactly, and that's what I'm saying. I know I just said to you that at the beginning, there, there were nowhere near the resolution that's available for this because as soon as you, I mean, you might be able to start seeing things if you're really, really, really close to it in the virtual world, really close to the screen. But as soon as you go further back, you, you're just going to lose the DPI on it. You're not going to be able to have. What I've, what, I've, what I've heard from watching videos and stuff about people using the HoloLens is that it's much higher resolution than any of the VR headsets because it projects via DLP into the center of the, the screen. It's not trying to fill your field of vision. You see the whole thing, um, and you no, can't I, see any pixels. I, what I did, I did do a search and research, and I did well, a bit of research. Anyway, I did find that virtual desktop, but it's not quite what I'm talking about. As a developer, I don't think one big desktop is good for me. I, it, it doesn't work for what I want. I want separated desktops for different, I suppose, concerns within the work I'm doing. Excuse me. I like the snapping features. I like being able to go. I like being able to work with the keyboard like I normally do and snap windows left, right, and up, down, and fucking maximize and minimize and all that shit. I hate that shit. I never use it. I turn it off straight away, Aerosnap. Uh, it's not the Aerosnap's not, it's not the same as I'm talking about. You can windows and left and right on your keypad. All oh, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. That's really, really handy for. It is handy. Uh, really, really handy, especially when you're working with documents and multiple dev environments and things. It's, as a, this is a, from a personal preference as a developer. It's not going to be any. I mean, still, I still, still cynical about it for games at the moment. I'm still cynical about it about how how popular it can be for games or how commercially viable it is. But yeah, right. So a corpse has just said, uh, why do we even need VR? Why not just have a flo floating hol hologram? So that's basically augmented reality. Problem is you've got to project holograms onto something. And they have to be or on a screen to... of some sort. Yeah, they have sort. to be a physical medium. You can't just put them in midair. At the moment you do. Yeah. Yeah, at the moment. And to be fair, to be fair that's exactly what I was talking about with there's 3D prob... ages ago. If 3D could, you could w work without having you know, glasses on, I'd be much more into it. But you couldn't. Have you seen those... Um... Ah, oh, shit, I meant to put that in the document. Um, the optical implants you get now. Um, mm -hmm. It's a eight-minute operation. Apparently, it, it, it guarantees you to have uh, three times 20-20 vision for every person who has a sort, and it lasts forever. Something like that you could use as an augmented reality medium. So you wouldn't actually like, have to project it out there. It'd be projected on your retina or on the lens in front of your, uh, your iris. And then that would give the it'd give you the sensation of it being at a certain depth away from you. Obviously, you can't interact with it anyway because it'd just be light. So that's that's one option. It's whether or not people would like to go through quite you know through surgery in order to get it. Well, again, initially no, but eventually Deus Ex is going to be the reality. Everyone's going to want augmentations of some sort, even if it's you know minimal ones like that. Because what's that? I mean, at the moment, people are going to get laser eye surgery, and um, so one of one of my in-laws recently had her lenses replaced in her eyes. She wasn't blind, but she had, you know, smoky vision or whatever. Just it's like, oh, for me, it's like. Well, the uh, thing but... is, well, think about it. If people are willing to do this for cosmetic reasons, get skin implants and and pores in their body and stuff. Surely they'll do it for functional reasons. Hundred percent. Or even so, just trendy reasons. I mean, look at uh, I say look at this is total fiction, but. Um, Black Mirror, where they've got that implant behind oh, the ear. Yeah, the what it's making it into a feature length movie. The um, the the grain. Robert Downey Jr. bought the uh, rights for it, didn't he? Oh, yeah, oh, called the grain. Yeah, the grain. That was it. Yeah. No, but that said, that's it's a great idea. But in yeah. reality, you know, there's going to potentially be also it'll be reality separation disorder. I love how you said that. That's a great idea. If the whole episode is about how bad an idea it is. <laughs> What? Did, that, that was lost on you, wasn't it? The, oh, whole, no, no, the whole episode no, no. was about how bad the an idea that was. Black Mirror is. No, I'm saying it's dark it, side of technology. I know, I know, I know. I'm just saying that that <laughs> it's a great idea, but there are, you know there are obviously potential social issues with it, etc. But um, right, anyway, yes. <clears throat> yeah. Which which are three DLC? 
Yes. What is this, Steve? Because you've uh, this is the one contribution you've made this week. Um, excuse me, I think I find that I've made many contributions, all criticising you, but all valid. I feel. Um, no, it's uh, it's part eleven and part twelve of the free DLC um, that CD Projekt are offering with The Witcher Three. Um, in this particular instalment, is a new set of armor, um, Skiller Guard armor, and a new um, Witcher contract. Which is the uh, contract? To skill guard. Um, it's Skelliger. a manhunt. Yeah, uh, Skelliger, yeah. It's a manhunt in Skelliger, I believe. But because I've been trying to 100% uh, Velen before I go to Skelliger, I've not actually been there yet. So. Well, I said I'm about I'm about one question mark and two maybe um, loots, you know, loot chests that I have to do on Velen, and then I'm just going to go and live in Skelliger for the rest of my life. Because I've pretty much nailed everything, and I've, I've got... I've got Pretty, you're nailing everything just today, aren't you, mate? I've been, uh, I've been getting, uh, I've got nearly full set of every single Gwent deck now as well. Um, in fact, there's, there was a DLC Gwent deck that I haven't yet even seen. I don't know where you get that from. Yeah, I haven't seen that. No. It was supposed to be a, a neutral deck, wasn't it? Mm. Stop press, I can now win Gwent games. Yay! That's my positive for the day. How uh, good is Gwent? <laughs> Have, have you got? Right. No, it's all right. Of course, Lou's going to say it's all right because he's about as interested in computer games as as my foot is interested in not kicking Shoot. him in the ass. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. so anyway, let's 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 end with a bit of Witcher love. Stag said, uh, "I picked up Witcher on your recommendation, guys. I have fallen in love. Bugs and all. It's such a great game. See, there are a few bugs in it, but I have to be honest, I haven't experienced that many." I mean, the, the funniest one, and I've got loads of screenshots of it, is when my ha my horse just ends up floating down a hill or kind of <laughs> upside down or, or inverted into a hill just because... But at least it corrects itself. It doesn't stay like that forever. So my <laughs> horse has never done that. <clears throat> no? Have you ever been down a hill, though? Like Yeah, yeah. Like, well, my horse uh, just rears up and stops when it comes to a hill. If you go down at a slight angle and kind of wheedle your way down the hill, especially when you're on Skelliger anyway, because it's just full of places that you can do this on, it, yeah. you, you just hit a... Just I, go, go on. I just bunny hop and trick jump roach everywhere. I'm getting <laughs> up mountains and stuff. You can't bunny hop, you've got <laughs> stamina. Unless you, unless, you have a, um, unless you have a werewolf decoction, then your stamina doesn't go down <laughs> when you're running. I do have one, but I haven't used that. I just, I just jump a lot. I try and jump. Before I know that Roach is going to stop at something, I'll try and jump over it, and he usually does. And he goes and jumps down hills and stuff. It's good. Um, any other Witcher stories, then, we've got to, to end on? Because we, we haven't done our list this week, either. Should we, we do haven't our done a list? list. Should we do a list? Has anyone Can't in chat be. got an idea of a list? Um, and, and for those who are new, I know there's a few new people watching this week, um, our, our list section is the way of the exploding list. <laughs> Steve doesn't contribute to that. I did. I wobbled moment. my camera. Yeah, after the fact, you bastard. I live further away than you guys. I'm near the coast. Um, so yeah, our our, our, um, <laughs> our, uh, our, our shut up. <laughs> <laughs> our list section is about basically favourite things in games or, or worst things in games. So we've we've had things like favourite cinematic moments, most beautiful scenery in a game. Um, most and uh, what, what was it? Then what we do last week? It was something to do with E3. It was favorite um, E3 reveals or most. No, it was E3 things that you 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 were excited for, but turned out to be shit. So yeah, we've we've basically. Um, but that was it. Favorite E3 disappointments or, or worst E3 disappointments, whatever you want to call it. Favorite them. disappointments. Mythalo has said favorite remakes. We haven't done that. We haven't done that. I, I'd because... like Sammy for that because he's got a lot of remakes that he's he's played and. Well, well, that's let's do it. Bugger it. Well, this is my favourite and worst. Let's let's mix it up a bit. Um, favourite, favourite, favourite re remakes. Final Fantasy VII. Yeah. <laughs> <I'm out>. um, <sighs> when we say um, open X open XCOM is really really good remake of the original XCOM for modern machines. It just adds enough new things to make it accessible to the modern audience but it's still the original game with the original graphics and stuff it's cool that's a really good remake uh, some would say that um brutal doom is basically a remake of doom and even i think it was john romero said it was the, playing brutal doom feels like the doom that we thought we should have made yeah i think he said that in one of the uh, yeah, playthroughs he was doing so 
Brutal Doom is a is a fantastic remake. It's if you play it and you've never played Doom before, you'll enjoy it and think this is what Doom is like. And it wasn't. Doom was actually a lot, a lot more soft core than Brutal Doom is. Um, but that's worth worth having a play. So remakes? Are we talking about like direct remakes or reimagining this? <laughs> because this is where it gets cloudy. Both, I'd say. Because we, you could say that Fallout Three is a, a remake of One and Two, really, couldn't you? It's, it's a sequel, isn't it? So we don't. We're not including think, sequels then. I don't think sequels. No, I think they've got to be. They've got to be remakes in the sense of reboots or reimaginings or at least updates to originals. I think. It, it I would should, count it as a remake. There should be easy because there's thousands of them, but I can't think of any. <laughs> Right now, off the top of my head, I can't think of a single one. Um, uh, okay. Um, Halo Anniversary Edition. That was a good remake. Wasn't that exactly the same, just with updated graphics, to the point where updated even... the graphics. The, but weren't they, they, they... Even, like, the... Um, physically, it was the same model. It was just updated, because you could switch it back to standard mode, couldn't you? Isn't the Master Chief collection supposed to be pretty good? Yeah, I'm supposed to be. I haven't actually I haven't got an Xbox One yet, so couldn't comment. Monkey Island, they didn't rem yeah, they have done a remake of Monkey Island. They did Monkey Island three, didn't they? That's not a remake. That's just it's. That is just a sequel. It's not yeah. a remake. Yeah, Monkey Island. Um, they're, they're, they're still doing them. In fact, there's I think there's one in production now. <coughs> there's there, there, there's there to about five or six, aren't there? I did. I got up to about four. And by the time I got after, I think after three, I just thought, nah, the the it's not fun anymore. It's not the same game as it was. Doom three was a poor remake, I thought. I mean, Doom three Doom was, was, was sensibly poor. meant that to be kind of a, a reboot, to be a, wasn't it? It was a reboot, and it wasn't very good. It was a different game altogether. And I think Doom four, they're getting it back to where it was. Although um, I'm sure Greg it, and he didn't like the look of it, and I kind of agree with some things. Shadow game. Um, that game that I bought, it was a NES game. Um, well, I think it was before Shadow the NES. Run. No, Shadow Gate. It was oh. a point-and-click kind of um, adventure. It's like a, it's like a text-based select them up. You basically selected a, a verb and then said, "Do you know, use torch on behemoth, behemoth, or something like that." You know, it's that kind of game. Anyway, the, the remake, I, I wasn't that keen on. I thought I was going to love it, but. Um, Corpse uh, mentioned they did do a remake of Monkey Island. He's right. They did a HD update for the iOS, I think, and possibly oh, other platforms. Shit. Yeah, but that was that was almost identical though. They just had the HD version with. Um, oh, I, I actually played the demo of this on the 360 on uh, Xbox Arcade, uh, and yeah, you could switch between the HD graphics and voiceovers or the original game with text, and it was mm. I, re it was really smooth. And you know what? For the what I played of it, I'd give that like a. A ten out of ten for a remake because it was identical. Six and a half out of twelve. Yeah. Um, what about uh, well, Black Mesa? Have you played that recently? Because you've been talking about that a lot. Uh, yeah. <coughs> I played. <coughs> Excuse me. I played it when it first came out. I've been following that for a while, and I was very impressed with it. Um, it is a very nice remake. It feels Valve quality. It does feel original. Hmm. And they've, they've changed just enough of it to make it still exciting. Like, there's new boss battles and stuff like that in it, which are pretty cool. Have you played that, Chris? Black Mesa Source? No, I've, again, I downloaded the demo ages ago when it was individual, free. you know. Yeah, when it was free, I, but I didn't play it. I think I've still got it somewhere, actually, the, the download. It's, it's very good. It's very it's it's a labour of love, like we were talking about with the Final Fantasy VII Remake. Well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to throw the Metal Gear Solids into there. Oh, you fucking would. Because the HD remakes pretty bloody good from from the, the very 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 similar to the originals um and also twin snakes as well from the original which is the gamecube remake which sam has criticisms about but i quite enjoyed what i've played of it so, what okay. about uh sonic the hedgehog 2013 uh, no no sonic the hedgehog game after three exists for me they're all, they're all just S don't sonic the hedgehog 2013 is a remake of the first sonic the hedgehog but is on it? mobile platform, and it's it is quite impressive. It stays quite true. They've updated the uh, the graphics. It still looks the same, but it's they like, better animated. The sounds obviously better, and you can play as Knuckles and Tails as well. I think the Chaos Engine. That was a pretty for, for a remake. That was a pretty good remake, but it just made you remember how terrible the original game was. It had a lot of hype around it, but it was actually quite good. 
but it's actually quite uh, bad. I mean, um, the that, the guy who made Sonic 2013 is the guy who did the Sonic CD remake for the Xbox, which was fantastic. It was really, really a labour of love. Yeah. Uh, beautiful, beautiful looking remake. So yeah, I'm going to go with that one. Um, Stack another meals. world anniversary edition. Or was it anniversary or what was that? Sorry. Yeah. Another it was world twentieth anniversary. Version, yeah, yeah. I didn't didn't that know that cool. one. That um, was cool. Stag Beetle in chat just said the two the new Tomb Raider. Uh, that's a reboot. Yeah, but that counts, I think. Yeah, it does yeah. count. Yeah, it does. Uh, yeah, it does. It's a reboot. It's not a remake. It's not a sequel well, though, Doom, so it counts. Doom, sure. Doom oh, Three is a reboot. It's a, a remake. reboot. Right, we did say we did say reboot at the beginning. Yeah. Oh well, I didn't hear that. <laughs> and I I veto your reboot. Such a twat. Yep. Um, Gauntlet, someone's mentioned. Now, isn't the new Gauntlet just basically a Diablo clone? A four player Diablo clone? Mm, I like the look of it, but I haven't played it, so. I think with, with Diablo 3 and Torchlight 2 out there, I, I don't know why you'd play Gauntlet. Yeah. It seems to be those two games have everything covered. But maybe. Mario Kart, God. I'm the only person in the world who doesn't like Mario Kart, and I hate the fact that I'm the only person who doesn't like it. Oh, Day of the Technical remake, I'd like that. I loved I've, I've actually been playing that fairly recently as well. I got um DOSBox and I've been hammering uh, I, I loved it. I love the sense of humour in it though. You mean Scum VM for Day of the Technical surely? Yeah, yeah, Scum VM, sorry. Uh oh, you come forever. Ah, oh, that's a that's a sequel though, isn't it? Yeah, there was the Megaton edition though, wasn't there? That was a re remake, wasn't it? No, I don't think so. There's there been no remakes of Duke Nukem 3D. The, the, There's been re-releases of it with um, modern engines and stuff, but it's still the same game, basically. Although, I said, I said Open XCOM was counted, so I guess Duke Nukem counts, but... Where'd you go with that? <laughs> hmm. Everything that's had a modern release is basically a remake then, isn't it? Duke Nukem 3D Megaton Edition. Reworked engine, light and added co-op. And non-MIDI soundtrack. Yeah, it's reworked it's, the engine, so I'd say that was a really, yeah. Yeah, really it does count in the sense that I classed uh, Open XCOM as a re uh, valid one. So yeah. Um, I'm any really terrible remakes? Yeah. Any really terrible remakes you play? Games that have really shat on the thing that you loved. <laughs> there was one, and I was it was in my it had it at the end end of my tongue. I forgot what it was now. I'll find it. I will find it. Um, I'm going to actually do something a little bit unconventional here and I'm going to make a statement now for the future and I'm going to say the Final Fantasy 7 remake is going to shit all over the original I, I really probably want to agree with that but I <laughs> you really probably I really probably want to agree. to agree with that yeah I, I feel like they're going to sh they're going to shit all over I feel like they're, they're not going to understand what made Final Fantasy 7 so good if they if they understood that the other Final Fantasies wouldn't have been so bad. Exactly, exactly. They'd keep making great Final Fantasy games, but they haven't. But they've they've purposefully changed from like the Materia system and things like that, though. In other in other it's Final Fantasy not, games, it's not the Materia system that, that made Final Fantasy VII. No, and it's the story, it's the feel, it's the artwork, it's, it's the, the characters, the heart it's... and soul they put into it. I disagree. Which, I think it's which the hasn't been system. in the, the it, oh God. I could make you an online material system game if you want. It'd probably take ten minutes. <laughs> I can arc at you. Awesome. The material um, system wasn't that complicated. It was quite straightforward and far fetched. Exactly. Did I say it was complicated? I said it was awesome. I didn't say it was complicated. Yeah, but it wasn't the much of the game really. Well, it wasn't. It, when I think of Final Fantasy VII, I don't think of the material system. I think of all the cool story stuff. I think of a lot of things when I think about Final Fantasy VII. Um. I'm struggling here. Stagbeals is a Materia uh, DLC. That's what they're going to do, isn't it? They're going to make uh, microtransactional yeah. Materia. That's what they're going to do. Do you want your W item? Then pay £1.25 for the W item DLC. Instead of grinding for hours trying to get your golden chocobos. I know, I try and quad I slash. I don't know how to can say it. Shadowrun. We did say that briefly, but that is a remake, Shadowrun Returns. Yeah. But that's not made by the same company or, or, or anything. It's it's completely rebooted by another company and done really well, I think. 
Um, there was. I, I've been waiting for a long time for a really good Magic Carpet remake, How and someone did. Them. There is one on Steam already, which looks a bit shit, <laughs> but it's a good thing we've got. Um, <laughs> shit reboot. It's shit, called... shit remake. Go on, sorry. Arcane, Arc Arcane World. It's called. Um, and it just—it's one guy doing it. Bad looks of it. And it was out on early access, but it's just not very good. Thief. Oh god, that was terrible! The new Thief was, was, that was awful. was so bad! It could have been so brilliant as well, but it was so And awful. it looked so good, the trailers looked so good for it. And the gameplay videos looked great, and it just turned out to be shit. See, you, you, could, you could say um, Human Revolution, Lou, because you don't like that, do you? Yeah, it's not a remake, though, oh, is no, it? It's, it's, a it's a sequel, yeah, sorry. Oh, there was an awful game that I was just thinking of that I have played a little bit of. Can't for the life of me think of what it was. I'm just posting a, a, a screenshot of Arcane World so you can see why it's not the, uh, the, the <laughs> it's not the Magic Carpet remake we're all waiting for. No. <laughs> That's good though. I'll play that. I'll play that. <clears throat> right. Um, yeah, I think I'm. Minecraft, think I'm... Minecraft was a shit remake of Lego. <laughs> <laughs> No, uh, I no, I'm, I'm, I'm lost. And I'm sure there'll be something that'll pop into my head as soon as we sh shut the show down. <clears throat> anyway. So, unless uh, unless anyone else has anything else to say, I think we shall uh, we shall end it there. <coughs> so, thank you, for, thank you very much, everybody, for watching tonight. Uh, next week, show up on time, you lazy, tardy bastards, because everyone tends to show up about ten minutes before we finish the show at the moment. And we're not going to run it later because we all have to go to bed at half nine. I do. I do. I'm old. Chris has um, been told off he's been playing The Witcher too much so he has to be in bed early tonight. I have. I am. I have to. It's also bloody too hot in this room with the, with me windows closed. And Anyway, right. So thank you very much everybody for, uh, for watching and we we'll, shall see you next week. Uh, if you're interested in anything that we do, go to our website www.resonancearcade.com and we're also on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook Google Plus and everything else forward slash Resonance Arcade and if yeah. you're really really interested in anything we do then I suggest you look in our windows or root through our trash yes and my address if you're is really, that's really, not real really, that's really, really interested in really... what we do and then you need to get yourselves a life <clears throat> that's enough insulting the audience catch you later guys yeah. bye 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 <laughs>